Hello there. In this video, we are going to look at the different methods of inventory valuation and how to automate these valuations using Excel. The three methods of inventory valuation are first in first out or FIFO, last in first out or LIFO, and the weighted average cost method, or it's popularly known as AVCO, which just stands for average cost method. To begin with, why do we have three different methods of inventory valuation? We're going to focus our attention on finished goods, regardless of whether a firm purchases and sells the goods or whether they produce and sell their goods. Okay. When a firm produces or purchases goods, these goods sit in their inventory and this is reflected in the balance sheet under assets. Okay. Whenever the firm sells these goods, we remove them from the inventory and we transform them to the income statement in the form of cost of goods sold. Your assets may be overstated or understated depending on how you decide to value your inventory. And at the same time, when you sell these goods, your profitability may be affected depending on whether your cost of goods sold is too high or too low. So choosing the right method to value your inventory is very crucial. And there are lots of rules surrounding this in the US GAAP system or the IFRS system. To understand these three methods, we're going to use a simple example Okay, and later we are going to use some Excel functions to automate these valuations. So consider that you have a beginning inventory of finished goods of 50 units as of the 1st of January, which means you probably produced that either in December or November of the previous year, right? Okay, let's say it cost you $10 to produce each unit. Okay, and then later on, as you move further in January, you're making a few more purchases of the same product Okay, on the 5th of January, you are pre you're purchasing 20 units, but now the cost of purchasing a single unit has gone up to $11. Okay, then on January 12th, you're purchasing a few more units, but the cost has gone up even further. Okay, as you can see, you're making further purchases during the month of January of varying amounts, but the cost has also varied going up or down depending on what day of what day you decide to purchase. Okay. Remember the three methods you learn here to value your inventory will provide you different results only if the cost changed, right? So we have three methods of valuation only because we have varying costs for different purchases. Let's start by calculating the total cost of each of these batches. Okay. So the batch of beginning inventory, what is the total cost for that? That's 50 units multiplied by $10 per unit. Okay, so the total cost is $500. We could just drag that formula all the way down. Okay, so the batch you purchase on January 5th is worth $220 and so on for the rest of it. Okay, if these are all the purchases you make throughout the month, then how many units do you have available for sale throughout the month? You can calculate that by using sum of these numbers, right? Okay. So we have 225 units available for sale throughout the month. Okay. What's the value of all these 225 units is again given by the sum of the total costs from this column. Okay. Let's say in January, you're selling 125 units. Okay. So you're left with an ending inventory of how many units at the end of January, whatever you had through the month, you subtract whatever you sold, right? So you're left with 100 units at the end of the month. Okay, we're going to use these numbers now to do our valuation using first in first out and last in first out and using weighted average. Okay, we're going to start with FIFO, first in first out. Okay which means for accounting purposes, we're going to assume that we are going to sell our products in the order in which they were purchased. How many units are we selling through the month of January? 125 units, right? So we start with these 50 units from January 1, then we sell the 20 units from January 5, that makes up 70 units. Then we sell also the 45 from January 12, that's 115 units in total. Then we need 10 more from the batch of January 19th and that gives a total of 125 units. 
It's simpler to visualize this manually, but the point of using Excel is that we are able to automate this regardless of the number of purchases. Okay, so let's start with how many units of each batch are actually being sold using FIFO. So we look at the first batch, which is the beginning inventory of 50 units. We would end up selling all of these 50 units only if the total units sold is more than 50 units, right? So how are we going to implement that using Excel? We're going to use the minimum function and say, okay, the minimum between 50 and 125 is what I'm going to sell from my first batch. So if the total units sold was, let's say 40, this would have given us just 40. So we would end up selling just 40 units from the beginning inventory. Okay. Now looking at the next batch of purchases, from January 5, which is 20 units. Okay, How do we calculate how many units out of those are being sold? Again, we use the minimum function. We take the 20, but now we need to take into consideration that we've already sold 50 units. Okay, So we take the 125, but we subtract the 50 from that. Now we see that all 20 units from this batch are being sold. Moving on to the next batch of purchases of 45 units on January 12th, we use the minimum function again between 45 and 125 minus how many units have we sold so far? 70, right? So I'm going to use the sum function there to cover my 50 plus 20, 70 units, okay? So now we see that the entire 45 units from that batch have been sold to. Okay, now I want to be able to click and drag this formula further. So I'm going to look at the formula and block some cells, which I don't want the addresses to change. So the 125, I don't, I don't want that address to change. And the starting sum from I4, I'm going to block that. Okay. Now I'm, now I'm going to copy this formula for the rest of the cells. And this shows that I'm selling 10 units from the batch of January 19 and no further units from the remaining batches. Okay. I've created another column for units which are not sold from each of those batches. Okay. You can use the same logic we used for the units sold or you could just subtract them from the total units you had from each of those batches. Okay. That's much simpler. So you're going to take the number of units from each batch and subtract them from how many of those you sold in each batch. Okay. Okay. So you can see that the batches from January 22 and 26 are completely unsold and you have five units left from the batch on January 19. Okay. What is the total cost of these units which are being sold or the units which are being unsold? Let's look at the total cost for the units that are sold first. 50 units are being sold and the cost for each of them is $10 per unit. Okay. And for unsold, zero units are being unsold and the cost for each of them is $10 per unit. Okay. I'm going to again click and drag them all the way down. So now we have two columns for units sold and unsold in terms of number of units and again a further two columns but now in terms of dollar valuations, okay? You can calculate the total of them using the sum function, okay? So that would be the sum of the number of units that are being sold. You can see that it's 125, and you can use that further for the remaining columns, okay? And you can see that 100 units are being unsold. This is for first in, first out, where we are assuming we are selling products in the order in which they arrive, okay? If we look at last in first out, we are assuming that we are selling the products in the reverse order in which they arrive. So first I'm going to sell the 35 units from January 26 and then the 60 units from January 22 and so on. Okay. So in LIFO, we have to start in the reverse order. Okay. First we are going to look at the batch from January 26. Again, we use the minimum function and we see if which is less, 35 or the total number of units you sell. And that's the number of units you're going to sell from that batch. Okay. And then moving further up, now we're going to look at the minimum between 60 
But now from the 125, I want to subtract the 35, which have already been sold. Okay, so we sell the entire 60 units from the batch of January 22. So moving further up to the batch of January 19, when 15 units were purchased, okay, I'm going to again use the minimum function of 15 units. Okay, again, we go 125 minus, now I have to subtract the 35 and the 60 from the 125. So I'm going to use the sum function again, okay, covering the 60 and 35. I would like to be able to expand this formula further up. So I'm going to block the cell addresses for those I don't want to change, which would be the D D13 for the 125. And I want to block the 35 and fix it at the lower end. Okay, so I'm going to block N9. Okay, now if I copy this formula and go further up, you can see that I sell 15 more units from the batch of January 12 but none of the units from the batches of January 5 and what was in the beginning inventory. Okay, so replicating what we did for first in first out, how do we find the number of units that are unsold? We take the total number of units from each batch and subtract the units sold from those batches. Okay, and the dollar valuations for the number of units sold or unsold is calculated again the same as before. We multiply the number of units sold with the cost of each unit and we multiply the number of units unsold with the cost of each unit. Okay, I'm going to drag the formula again for those two columns. And as before, like as in the case of first in first out, we're going to copy the sum formula here too. Okay, you can see 125 units are being sold and 100 units are being left in the inventory at the end of the month. Okay, let's summarize these numbers from FIFO and LIFO into a single table. Okay, so what are the cost of goods sold under FIFO? Okay, the cost of whatever is sold is given in this column. Okay, and what's the valuation of the ending inventory? By ending inventory, I mean the valuation of the products that are unsold, right? Okay, so the valuation of ending inventory is given by this number. Under LIFO, the cost of goods sold is given by that and the ending inventory valuation is okay. We still haven't looked at what the weighted average cost method is. Okay, So what exactly is weighted average cost method? Instead of considering whether your product goes first in first out or lost in first out, we always take a weighted average regardless of what the costs are. Okay, And we use that weighted average cost in the valuation of our cost of goods sold and our ending inventory. Okay, so how do we do that? So we look at the available for sale finished goods under the period of consideration. In this example, it's January. Okay, so we have a beginning inventory batch and several purchases of varying amounts. Okay, and all the and remember all these purchases were made at different cost levels. Okay, so we at the for the month. So for the month of January, we have 225 units which are readily available for sale and the cost of these 225 units overall is $2,630. So under the weighted average cost method, first I'm going to find the average cost of each unit. So I take the $2,630 and divide them by the 225 units. Okay. This $11.69 reflects the average cost per unit of all these purchases and the beginning inventory put together. Okay, So under the weighted average method, I'm going to use this single number, which is $11.69 per unit in my valuation of the cost of goods sold and my ending inventory. How do I do that? My cost of goods sold is $11.69 multiplied by the number of units I'm selling, which is 125. My ending inventory is 11.69 multiplied by the 100 units which are left in my inventory, okay? As you can see, the valuation of cost of goods sold and the ending inventory is different depending on the method of valuation you decide to choose.
We can also do a quick check to make sure that the numbers make sense. Okay, I'm going to add the cost of goods sold with the ending inventory for each of those methods. This number should be exactly the same as the total cost of the available for sale goods. And in this case, it's $2,630. Okay. If you want to modify this template to an example which has many more purchases, then all you have to do is insert a few rows here and add that new purchase information and everything else recalculates itself. Okay. Thank you for watching. Cheers.